I think the, the, the best advice that I got was uh, if you aren't making mistakes, you're not learning. I mean, I use that every single day in life and in dog training. Hello, my bonnie bairns, and welcome to the Superhero Dog Owners Show. This is episode 15. 15. My goodness. Um, we had a super episode last week. Loads of good feedback from people who enjoyed our interview with Rachel Bean, um, our very good friend who was a vet nurse, and a dog behaviourist as well. And uh, if you are enjoying the show, yeah, you could do us a little favour and you could head over to iTunes and you could leave a review for us, yeah? It'll take you two minutes and it'll make you feel really good. And it'll make us feel good too, Alex, won't it, it? Yeah. It's nice to know that, you know, if you're out there and you are enjoying it, <laughs> it'll be nice for us to know that, yeah? So, so get yourself over to iTunes and leave a review if you're enjoying the podcast. We had loads of people jump on the inner circle this week, Alex. Oh, fantastic. Our, our special that. offer that we're running. Um, it's only £7 if you join before the end of the month um, for your first month subscription. Um, but we're, we're going we're gonna to do another interview this week. We're talking to uh, our first dog training friend from the US of A. This is... Uh, Megan Carnes, we recorded this interview this week with Megan. Megan runs the College Scholar um, Training School over there. She's got a fantastic blog that gets like a bazillion shares on Facebook and stuff. That's how I stumbled across her. She's a really good writer, um, really, you know, really knowledgeable dog trainer. And we both learned a lot from listening to this interview, didn't we? And I'm sure you guys are going are gonna to learn a lot too. So uh, I'm just going to say dive straight in and roll the video, Alex. Let's go. Okay, it's time for our, our next guest. And if you are into dogs and dog training, and then you, you will probably have come across the College Scholar blog. Yeah, there's loads of blogs found around on Facebook. I'm a huge fan. Yeah, not only is it, it's always really good content, I, I feel like it, it's written by someone who, who knows dogs, but knows people as well. And it's really interesting and engaging. And I'm, I'm delighted to, to welcome the blog's author, who is the, the founder and owner of the College Scholar Dogs Training School in San Diego in California. So a big hello to Megan Carnes. Hey there. Hey, Megan. How are you? How are you today? Okay? Doing well, thank you. Awesome. All right, we're going we're gonna to dive straight in with the Greyhound round, Megan. This is for people who don't know anything about you at all. Hopefully we can get to know you a little bit better. Are you ready to go off the leash? I am. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, would you rather be chased by an Irish wolfhound or a hundred chihuahuas? <laughs> Irish wolfhound, hands down. <laughs> <laughs> Who is your favorite superhero? Uh, I think I'd have to say Spider-Man. Good choice, good choice. Popular choice with my kids as well. Uh, would you prefer to walk a Vizsla in the woods or a bulldog at the beach? Absolutely, a Vishla in the woods. <laughs> okay, and who's your favorite dog cartoon character? Uh, I, I think I have to take it back to old school. I think I like Goofy. Goofy, good choice. Yeah, we like Goofy. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Megan, uh, like, like myself, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to give you 9 out of 10 for that. Well done, you, you did well. <laughs> um, so like myself, Megan, you've, you've had a, a number of different dog businesses, you know, you haven't just done dog training, you've, you've had, you know, um, doggy daycare type things and, and, and lots of different stuff. What, uh, what, what is it about dogs that you love so much? And, you know, what, what led you to, to what, what was, what was the moment when you went from being a dog owner to becoming a dog trainer? I think uh, for me, it was when I got my first dog. So my first dog that I ever owned by myself, I was in way over my head. I had no idea what I was doing. My dog was the best and the worst dog that I have ever owned. He tore nine foot holes in my carpet and all sorts of really awful things. And through training him, I found a passion for training dogs in general. And he's pretty much the one that got me started in all this. Brilliant. And what was he, what was he called? Uh, his name was Kobe. Kobe, brilliant. And what was he? He was an American Staffordshire Terrier mix. Oh, wow. Nice. Just a rescue dog from the shelter. Yeah. Awesome, brilliant. So you, you've, you've touched upon it there. Dog ownership can be really hard, <laughs> especially at first, you know. Um, 
And being a dog trainer can be hard as well. You know, I don't want dog owners, pet dog owners to think that we know everything because we always make mistakes. And uh, so t tell us about something. Tell us about, a, a, you know, the worst moment that you've ever had as a dog trainer. I don't know if there was anything that was really awful, but I can tell you that there are a ton of embarrassing stories that I can tell you. All right, let's have some of them then. <laughs> about training dogs. Yeah, they are. I mean, they're animals, so they never cooperate I think when you want them to cooperate and I know there was one day when we were doing a photo shoot and I had a whole team of dog trainers and dogs and we were in one of my clients backyards and we were setting up a scene where we wanted to stage a home invasion and we wanted to have the dog rushing in to take care of things and the photographer was noticeably terrified of my dog just uh, scared her half to death and so she positioned herself way out to the outside sat on the side of a, a swimming pool and as i sent my dog in she turned at the last minute after the bad guy and turned and stared directly at the photographer. And as we were all screaming her name, trying to get her to come back, she took off towards the photographer. And at the very last second, she dove past her into the pool and took her, her, herself for a swim. So she was not into working that day. She <laughs> was into scaring us all and taking herself for a good swim. <laughs> That's excellent. Excellent. And the, was the photographer okay? Did, <laughs> she was okay. She was a little shaken up. She thought that dog was coming for herself, uh, coming for her good, and so she, we all had a good laugh afterwards. She, she was more relieved than anybody. I think she was. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Megan, what's the best advice you've ever been given in your life? Dog-related or anything uh, else? I think the, the, the best advice that I got was uh, if you aren't making mistakes, you're not learning. I use that every single day in my training and in my life. I think it was, you know, it, it was a huge kind of moment for me. One of my training mentors told me um, that if my training looked perfect and I wasn't making any mistakes, I wasn't getting any better. And so I needed to get out there and be really vulnerable and um, show all of the areas that we were having problems with because that was the only way we were going to fix them. And I use that every single day in life and in dog training. Yeah, that's brilliant. You also use that in the blogs as well. I think the uh, I think the insecurities come across and the you know the the, the nervousness that we, that we all feel. And I, I think it it makes it makes dog owners think that it's okay that they make mistakes, doesn't it? As well. So yeah, I, I love that about your blogs as well. Oh, thank you very much. No worries. Um, so can you tell me a story about how you've, you've used that advice practically, in, you know, in your business or in your personal life? Uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely use that every single day. You can read about it on the blog. I talk about it all the time. I make mistakes every day of my life, but I've definitely shifted mindset to celebrate those mistakes. And I think that, uh, I mean, just in the blog in general, I think that it definitely humanizes us when we're talking to other people to be able to not stand up on a pedestal and say, I'm a perfect dog trainer. My dog always behaves. I can tell people without a doubt that on a daily basis, my dog does something to completely outsmart me. And I think that it helps make dog trainers more relatable in general to the public when we can show our mistakes as well. Yeah, definitely. No, I I agree totally. Yeah, it's it. The training the dog is the the easy part sometimes, isn't it? It's getting the owner on board, and you know you want to get the owner on board and make them feel like they can make mistakes as well, don't you? So yeah, that's a really good advice. Um, you put a, a huge emphasis on um, using play when training your dog, which I love as well. Something that we promote a lot. <clears throat> you know, not only do I think it's the best way to connect and motivate a dog, but it's just really good fun as well. You know, when I was first. First, shown how to you know how to interact with the dog and have fun with him. I I couldn't believe how much I enjoyed it, you know. And then I, that was I didn't want to take my dog and you know let him go and play with other dogs anymore. I wanted to keep him for myself, you know. So can you can you so what you know when did that happen for you? When did the kind of penny drop for you when you when you realised how powerful play could be as a as a training method? I trained my first working dog uh, not using any real play whatsoever, and she was a real challenge for me, honestly. I had no idea what I was doing. She was the first dog I had ever trained for work, and, and she used to bite me regularly. I mean, we got into our share of stuff while she really didn't care much to be around me, and, uh, and I changed training clubs. I started working with a trainer that emphasized play, and my second dog... 
uh, we kind of shifted gears on her as we were raising her. And it was so striking for me to see the difference between her and my relationship versus the first dog that I trained who really could have cared less about being with me when we were on the training field. Mm-hmm. So it was it was very proof positive that play is such a powerful way to build relationships with um, with our dogs. Yeah, definitely, definitely it is. And how do you uh, how do you approach a, a training session with a an owner, and, and how do you get them to understand how important play is and how, how they can use play? I think for me, the easiest way is just to show them. Yeah. So you know, as as they walk out with their dog who's lost focus, which is a huge problem, I think, in dogs in general. Yeah. And you know, the dog that's paying attention to the dogs or the butterflies or the squirrels, and you know, not acknowledging their owner, and then I can take the leash and play with the dog and achieve, you know, in no time flat. 100 percent engagement and have a ton of fun doing it i think as soon as they see that the light bulb goes off and mm. and they throw caution to the wind and they'll get more involved with play yeah definitely see seeing is definitely believing isn't it yeah and then getting them to believe that they can do it as well it's uh yeah it, it's beautiful it's lovely um so if there's someone listening to this podcast now you know they're watching us and they they, they hear us talking about motivating the dog you know and they wish they could motivate their dog more like a dog trainer I think some people think that we have like magical powers, but we don't really. We just mess about and be stupid with the dogs, you know. How can, uh, you know, what, what would be three things that they could try and do with their dog at home to help them have a better connection and have more fun with their dog? Easy things. Sure. I think um, my first piece of advice would be don't force the issue. So if your dog doesn't want to play with you, shoving the toy in their face is not going to get them to want it anymore. <laughs> It's going to probably make a negative association. So instead, just be more interesting, make the toy more interesting. Um, but for sure, don't force the issue. I would say celebrate the small successes. Mm. So for me, I'm big on just rewarding engagement and focus, just rewarding my dog for being with me, mm-hmm. as opposed to asking for yeah. a ton of obedience right mm. off the bat. I think if we start small and celebrate the successes, it will make our dog uh, want to engage with us more often. Um, and then I would say, don't worry about what other people think about you. That's the hardest piece of advice for, uh, getting owners to play with their dogs because they're so concerned about looking foolish. And I always tell them, you know, are you more concerned with a complete stranger or the dog at at the end of your leash? Because we're all here because we love dogs. So, I mean, we have to make those dogs a priority and we have to stop worrying so much about what other people think. Yeah, definitely. No, that's fantastic advice. I always recommend people, um, you know, if they are really nervous, just stay at home in your sitting room, shut the curtains and just be stupid there. Nobody can see you, you know, you'll, and then you'll quickly see how much fun it is, won't you, with your dog. And, 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 and then when you get a bit more confident, then take it outside. But yeah, that's uh, re- really good advice. You do, a, um, you do quite a bit of corporate work as well too, Megan, I believe, and you know, where you use dogs to teach people and businesses about teamwork and stuff like that. That, that was interesting to me. How does this work and why is it so effective when you use dogs like that? I think it's a it's an amazing illustration of behavior science when we bring the dogs out. I think leadership in general is about um, kind of motivating our employees in the corporate world and um, getting them to want to make good choices. And I think we use the dogs and the behavior science that dog trainers have have um, kind of have down pat to illustrate how we can change the wants of a dog that doesn't even speak our language and get them motivated to make the right choices. And I think that's really powerful for people to see us take this completely green dog and make them want to work with us. And we can apply those same fundamental principles of behavior change and behavior science directly in the corporate world. So it's it's been really powerful. Yeah, I bet it is, yeah. Is it... Um... Is it as easy when you have people there who aren't dog people necessarily? Uh, sometimes it can be a little challenging if they're not dog people, but I think everybody can agree on the, the uh, watching the behavior science at work and the behavior change. I think some people might get a little bit intimidated at times, but there are always warned in advance what we're about to do, and 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 the dogs are are relatively safe for the most part. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely as safe as the photographer was, anyway. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. We might give a few people a good scare from time to time, but it's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, 
All right, we're, we're coming to the end of the interview now. It's been really, really interesting. Um, you have a you have an, an online um, dog training element to your business as well, um, which I was really interested in because we have something similar. Um, so wh where can people go to find out more about you know you or the blog and, and, and what you're up to at the, at the Collard Scholar? <laughs> Absolutely. So our website is collard-scholar.com. And we have a huge library of articles and resources for dog owners. And we also offer online training courses there that are fully interactive. So they allow you to engage with the trainer and learn kind of fundamental principles of psychology and, you know, some tactical moves that dog owners can try at home. So uh, we have that all on the website. Brilliant. And you are, are you on social media and stuff as well? Yeah, absolutely. We're all over social media. So you can find us at The Collared Scholar on Facebook. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, that's that's been fantastic, Megan. I want to thank you really, you know, very for, for your time. It's been fantastic. Do you, um, you know, when you're not when you're not helping people with their dogs, or what, what, how does Megan Carnes like to relax and chill out? Uh, I, I I think spending time with my dogs. I think I spend all day training other people's dogs, and so taking my dogs to the beach is the best best escape for me just watching them run and play in the water. It's amazing. Yeah, it's really nice. I'll I'll, I'll vouch for that as well. It's not. You know, how does a dog walk or relax? He relaxes by going to walk his own dogs. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. That's brilliant. Um, well, thanks again, Megan. Uh, I've, I've really enjoyed this. I'm sure people will take some, some, some of the advice on board to, to help them to, to play and have more fun with their dogs. And uh, hopefully we'll, we'll have you on the show again, I hope. Absolutely. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks very much. Take care. Absolutely. You too. So that was our interview with Megan. It was great to talk to her. You should definitely check out her blog, the Collard Scholar blog, and, and follow it. And, you know, she's always given away some really useful dog training tips and advice. And she has a super way of telling stories too, Alex. I, I, I'm, she does, yeah. I'm a big, big fan. I think it's really interesting, Alex, that, you know, we're talking, we're talking to all these dog trainers from kind of all over the world now, really, aren't we? You know, we've had America, Australia. Next week, we're speaking to someone from India, which I'll be telling you about in a moment. But... I think it's really interesting that that all all these dog trainers we're all saying a similar kind of thing. You know, mm -hmm. it's all about it's all about getting focus from your dog. You know, making the training enjoyable for him, and basically just trying to have as much fun as you can. You know, definitely, that's where all the the great training and and stuff stems from. These kind of simple, definitely, yeah, simple yeah, practices yeah. And, and principles. Uh, you know, it's reassuring to me to. I mean, I'm I'm loving speaking to all the the guests that we're having as well, but it's reassuring to know that we're. We're obviously on the right track, aren't yeah. we? Because all the other guys are doing a similar thing to what we're doing, mm. uh, and to what we're teaching as well. Um, so, and and it's what would also the kind of thing that we're teaching inside the inner circle. And you've got till the end of the month to get your first month for just seven pounds. Uh, if you join the inner circle at www.mydogsuperhero.com forward slash inner circle forward slash offer that offer is going to disappear at the end of the month and but you can get your first month for just seven pounds if you go there and you sign up and i'll send you your book and your dvd and your cd and everything that you get in your welcome pack and stuff as well um so so people should definitely do that they should also come back next week because next week we're talking to a dog trainer who have known about for a number of years um I was, I was a little bit starstruck, Alex, when I spoke to this uh, this dog trainer. I won't lie to you. Um, her name's Shirin Merchant, um, and she's kind of single-handedly transformed the way the dog training is is taught and is practiced in India. You know, so it's quite a claim to yes, fame. Yes, quite, quite the influential <laughs> figure. She's also a lovely, lovely person, and uh, the, the interview is just it's just spot on. So next week we're going to be talking to Shirin. Um, you guys should definitely come back and, and listen to that, watch that, enjoy that. And that's it from me. Is that it from you, Alex? That's it from me too. So thanks very much for watching, everyone. We'll see you next week. And if we don't see you through the week, we'll see you through the window. Yeah.